Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Now, in the physical realm, we're on earth. But in the spiritual realm, there's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of Satan. And they are at war with one another. Now, who's in the kingdom of Satan? It's Satan, his demons, and people who do not have the Holy Spirit living in them. That's Satan's kingdom. In the kingdom of God, it's God, the angels, and people who have the Holy Spirit living in them. That's God's kingdom. And we are at war with one another. Now, if you're God's child and you're born again of the Holy Spirit, you were once in Satan's kingdom, and God drew you out of there and saved you. You repented, you received the Holy Spirit, and he placed you in his kingdom. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now the people who are in God's kingdom are forgiven of their sins, and there's vessels of glory and mercy. People in Satan's kingdom are not forgiven of their sins and their vessels of wrath unless they repent. Okay? Those are the two kingdoms. It's a spiritual war. I didn't even know about this war until I was like 26 years old. Most people don't even know about this. It's spiritual. You can't see it with the eye, but it's happening. Now, when you come to Christ, you are forgiven of your sins, and God makes you royalty and a priest. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And when you repent, you receive the Holy Spirit, you have true faith in Jesus Christ, and you have peace with God through Jesus Christ. You're no longer under God's wrath. You're forgiven. Now, the people in God's kingdom practice righteousness. The, the people in Satan's kingdom practice sin. You see, this is a fight between good and evil. Satan's kingdom is evil. God's kingdom is good and light. So like people will come and they'll be like, well, I believe in Jesus Christ in my mind. So I'm saved. I'm forgiven. You're not even in God's kingdom if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you don't practice righteousness. Now, God's children could go off and practice evil. They could fall to sin unto death. But we do not live in sin unto death. We practice righteousness. When God gives you the Holy Spirit, you become a new creation. You desire to do good. You desire to please God. Okay? Little children, let no one deceive you. Whosoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So this shows us who's in God's kingdom and who's in Satan's kingdom. And we are at war with the devil. The devil is so, he hates human beings so much that he will torture people in his own kingdom. You know, give them bad thoughts, hurt them, all sorts of things. But once you actually become born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you, you become Satan's enemy because you're on God's team. 
You see, there's Satan's team and there's God's team. When you're on God's team or in God's kingdom, you become Satan's enemy and he will go after you and attack you. That's why it says that we must put on the whole armor of God. God gives you armor in this war. Okay, I'm not going to go into the full armor, but we're wrestling against the demons. The demons come and attack us spiritually in our mind through other people who are in Satan's kingdom. Even some of the people in God's kingdom, the Satan's, Satan's demons can use to hurt you. He can influence people just like God can influence people. We're at war. You know, it's so that doctrine where all you have to do is say you believe in your mind. You're not even on God's side. Who are you fighting if you're living in sin? You're not fighting evil. God's children fight evil. We don't practice evil. If we sin, we repent. Now, Satan's going to come and accuse you constantly. That's part of his attacks. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So Satan's going to come and accuse us daily. What does that mean? He'll tell you you're not right with God. You're not forgiven. You're not of God. He'll come and lie to you. Tell you you're not saved. When you're not sinning, okay, unto death. He'll just come and do it. It's like what the Pharisees did to Jesus Christ and the disciples. They went and condemned them all the time over things that were not sin. That's what Satan does. How do we defeat Satan with the blood of Christ? We're covered in Jesus Christ's righteousness. When you become born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. God covers you in his blood. It's like you have his righteousness on you. You're justified by true faith in Jesus Christ. That's your true faith. It's not just saying in your mind you believe. Okay? And through much tribulation, we will enter the kingdom. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, Satan will come after you. He's your enemy now. And you will face a lot of tribulation. Oh, I have faced so much tribulation. Which God allows to refine us into his image. Okay. I'm telling you, yesterday I did not have a good day. The devil has been attacking me a lot. In my mind, the devil will attack you a lot if you're God's child, but also if you go out and do your calling publicly, it can become very difficult. He'll attack me a lot. And I got this dream from God. In the dream, there was this snake in my room. It was a snake. And, and I had caught it in my blanket at one time. At a part in the dream, there was also a part in the dream where someone was stepping on it. I believe it was me, but I was looking at it from like a third person. I believe that's God telling me, keep Satan under your foot. But I didn't have a good day because my bunny passed away. I was going to preach and I just didn't feel good after that. He was older, you know. And I could tell he wasn't doing good, but... And then people came and attacked me on my uh, videos, saying evil, horrible things to me. You see, when people hear the real gospel, that you really must turn from sin unto death, receive the Holy Spirit, demons go crazy over that. 
They hate it. They'll start lying to people in their mind and tell them this girl's crazy, this girl's proud, you know, this girl's evil, you know, and then the people will write it to me. Because the demons don't want people to repent. You see, Satan wants people to stay in his kingdom, lost and blinded. God wants to bring people to his kingdom, but Satan's going to try to stop that, you see. Now, a lot of people in Satan's kingdom don't know this war is even going on. They will be told at one point. God will let them know, okay? They must repent and have true faith in Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit to be saved. He'll let them know. But a lot of people don't even know this is happening. A lot of people think because they believe Jesus Christ is real, they're going to heaven, they're in God's kingdom, but they're not. Do you see the people in God's kingdom practice righteousness and they have the Holy Spirit living in them? That's the people in God's kingdom. People in Satan's kingdom, they practice evil without true conviction and they don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. One of God's children could go off and live in evil, but God would discipline them. Now, God's kingdom is in heaven, right? But it's also on earth in the way that we have the Holy Spirit living in us and we're members of the kingdom. And it says there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, which walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Satan will try to condemn us constantly, but there's no condemnation for us. We're forgiven. Now I'm just going to talk about some of the parables Jesus Christ said the kingdom of heaven is like. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. What is Jesus Christ saying about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God? It, it increases. God is the God of increase. He would show me that name, Joseph. It means God will add or increase. This is not some type of like prosperity thing. It's just what God does. Those who bring forth fruit in me, I purge them so they bring forth more fruit. God's kingdom is growing. Okay, that, that's the way his kingdom is. You could look at it in the way of his children grow. He wants his children to grow, and also he wants people to come to the kingdom and for the kingdom to grow, okay? Now, if you see here, it's like a mustard seed, and then it became a great tree. It's symbolic to God's child. You see in the parable of the sower, when Jesus Christ talked about how, how in the parable he would take the seed and he would throw the seed, and the seed that fell on good ground brought forth fruit, a lot of fruit. What's the good ground? It's God's child. The word is the seed. In another parable of the, the, the tares and the wheat, the seed is literally his child. It's just in different, different symbolic language God likes to use, but the good ground is like the heart condition of a person. And then they become a good tree, symbolic, and they bring forth good fruit. What is the fruit? It's good works for God. It's also the fruit of the Spirit, the character of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, the fruits of the Spirit. But the other seeds fall into the stony places. They don't become a good tree. Those are people who, who do not come to the kingdom. According to God's, you know, calling on your life for me, it's kind of like I'm like a little 
farmer. Like I sow a seed. Like when I preach, it's like seeds fall symbolically. And the person that comes to Christ is the one who who it's on good ground. They become a tree. Or I'm like a little fisherman. I fish and, you know, I try to find God's child. And you see also, if you go back, he says it's like a, a mustard seed. It's really funny. There's, there's like a bottle of mustard in, in my house and it has a little monarch butterfly on it. The monarch butterfly means transformation. And I always saw, like, I felt like God was speaking to me through it, but I didn't really get the mustard part. It's like a little joke. Because what is mustard made of? Mustard seeds. And he also says about faith. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed... You shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence from me under place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Mustard seed is a very small seed. God wants us to grow in faith. When you first come to God, you're like a tiny little tree. And then through him watering you, through you, your relationship with him, through you reading his word, you become a greater tree and you bear fruit and he purges you it's like a whole process he also says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it and the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels and cast the bad away. So the kingdom of heaven, it's, it's like our pearl of great price. Jesus Christ is our pearl of great price. But you could also think of it at like we're the pearls of great price. I'm looking for pearls. I'm looking for fish. I'm looking for the good ground. Or, you know, and the next one was like a net. You go into the sea, you catch the fish. God's very symbolic. So if you're God's child, what is your function in God's kingdom? Bare minimum, your function is to glorify God. What's your function? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Once you come to God's kingdom, you receive the Holy Spirit. Your function is to glorify him. You're, you're a vessel of glory and mercy. What does it mean when I say glorify him, honor him? And basically, it's like we make him look good in front of his enemy, Satan. How do we do that? Bare minimum, you must stay in repentance and not do sin unto death. You see, you fight against sin unto death. You fight evil and practice righteousness. That glorifies God at the core. Okay? I would say no matter what, stay in repentance. Very important. Your whole life. You must abide in Christ. That's how you abide in him. You must walk in the light to fellowship with him. You must abide in him. And then he brings forth the fruit through you. If a child of God goes and lives in sin, that does not glorify God. Now he has mercy and he'll discipline you. You have to understand you're in God's kingdom now, not Satan's. People in Satan's kingdom practice evil without repentance and don't have the Holy Spirit. We practice good. It's like in Star Wars. They got the light side and they have the dark side. We're on the light side. We practice righteousness. That's why that whole, that whole bad doctrine of like, all you have to do is say you believe when these people practice evil. 
They're not even in the war. They're not fighting against the devil. They're living in their sins and just thinking in their mind. It's like being on the dark side and saying, I'm on the light side with your mouth. It doesn't even make sense. It's a doctrine of demons. God's children work the works of God. There was a time where Jesus Christ was talking to the Pharisees and he was like, you do the deeds of your father. And they thought, you know, oh, you know, we're, we're Abraham's children. They thought they're of God. And, and Jesus Christ was like, no, you do the works of your father. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. He's like, if you were of, of uh, God, you would love me, because I came from God. You see, God's children practice righteousness, and then we're led by the Holy Spirit to do good works. People in Satan's kingdom practice evil. They do the works of their father, or you could say of, of Satan's kingdom. Now, a lot of people, like I was saying before, don't know they're in this battle. They don't know, but there are people that do know, and they are in Satan's kingdom knowingly doing evil on purpose, like witches, there's celebrities, like really high up there, celebrities with a lot of money and power that worship the devil knowingly, do it for him. There was a time where Jesus Christ was being tempted by Satan. And, and Satan said, you know, worship me, you know, because I'm in charge of all the kingdoms of the world. And I'll give them to you if you worship me doing the same thing to people today really happening there's people that knowingly serve the devil on purpose and try to glorify him now God's children glorify him and we're at war Satan will come after you like no tomorrow I'm telling you if you're really of God why he doesn't want God's kingdom to increase on earth he doesn't want people to be saved. He doesn't want me to speak. He doesn't want you to speak God's truth. He doesn't want you to do your calling in life. We're here to glorify God. And he will lead you into your calling. Okay? So stay in repentance. What I mean by that, don't practice sin unto death. If you sin, repent, form a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're not within God's kingdom, repent and receive the Holy Spirit and come into God's kingdom. This is not easy. It's difficult. It's the narrow way. I've had to go through a lot of tribulation and a lot of people hating me. I don't like it. I, I don't like when people hate me. It's like people want to have a relationship with God the way they want to have it. They want to just think, okay, I just have to believe in my mind. God's real. That's not biblical. It's something Satan came up with. And then when I tell them differently, they just get so upset. Well, this is God's way. We have a relationship with God the way God says to have a relationship with him. Not the way we just think in our mind. People just want to shoot the messenger. I'm a messenger here. You know, but it's biblical. We'll be persecuted. This is God's true doctrine. Everyone who wants to go to heaven has to do it. Everyone has to stay in repentance. Receive the Holy Spirit who wants to be born again or who wants to go to heaven. We have a relationship with God the way he says to have one. And it does take sacrifice and it is difficult. 
because you have to go through a lot of tribulation and attacks, but it glorifies God. It's you doing your function while, while you were made, and you get to see his glory, and you get to hear from him. And when you do works led by the Holy Spirit or any work you do, if you're born again for God, you will receive rewards in heaven for it. You will be very rewarded in heaven. This life is a test, guys. We're in testing. God tries the righteous. That's what this life is. And then when you die, eternal life happens for eternity. You get to reap all your rewards. So, stay in repentance. And if you're not on God's team, come on God's team. Even though it's not easy... It's worth it. My calling is a preaching, teaching, edification calling. And I'm telling you, if I did not do it, I would not feel fulfilled in life. But I just felt like I don't want to do it anymore. I would still go to heaven because I'm forgiven of my sins. We don't get into heaven through works we do. But it satisfies me because I'm doing my function. Now, people who... If you live in repentance, at the core, you're glorifying God and doing your function. But there's higher functions. There's a calling. And for me to feel satisfied, I, I have to do my calling. And God wants me to do my calling. God knows human beings need work to do. He created us that way. He'll give you work to do for his kingdom. And you will, you will be rewarded for it. Very difficult. I'm telling you, so many people have treated me like dirt. I've been through a lot of tribulation. God knows how hard it's been for me. I've had thorns. I've had horrible illnesses on me. But it's part of the narrow road. It glorifies God that we stay with him through all the hard times. So come to God's kingdom. All right. Love you guys. Bye.